Saul Goodman. Yeah, it's like Saul Good, man. <laughs> that guy has a lot of energy. Yeah. It's just a name. There's something strange about seeing someone's personal space opened up to the world. Imagine if you disappeared right now. What would the people who came looking for you find? That happened to Saul Goodman. Thanks to Ed the Disappearer, he vanished without a trace, and we got a glimpse of what he left behind. Most people craft the appearance they present to the world. Saul certainly knew a thing or two about that and had a real sense of showmanship, but behind closed doors, is there a reason to keep the show going? Hey guys, Pete here. Today I'm going to talk about the Better Call Saul Season 6 opening teaser. One thing that always came up when discussing the character Saul Goodman, and just how different he was from the Jimmy McGill we met back in the first season of the prequel, was that we never saw anything about his personal life in Breaking Bad. Where did Saul go when he wasn't at his office? What did he do when he went home after a long day of being Walter White's lawyer? That curtain has been pulled back. And, well, it's something to behold. I've already mentioned most of the Easter eggs in my recap for the episode, so I won't linger that long on those here. There were some interesting facts that came out in interviews and on the Insider podcast, which I do want to get into in this video. And then I just want to discuss some of the questions that this leaves me with. There were some big ones that had been out there sort of hanging over the entire series that it makes you reconsider. Personally, I was never a fan of the Kim is just at home during the Breaking Bad timeline, like she was right there by Saul's side and we just never saw her. Essentially, she was the mastermind running Ice Station Zebra, with Saul being the front man. For me, it just felt too cute to try to pull that, and in my mind, this overripe abode shuts the door on that idea. To be fair, Kim is turned on by Jimmy's scammy side, and is even playing an active role in creating Saul's public persona, but I won't be able to accept that she was recently living in this place until I see it. The seemingly unnecessary opulence is what stands out the most. No one Jimmy's trying to impress or attract as potential clients should ever see this place. At the strip mall, at the courthouse, I get the idea for the flair, but why would anyone need to have a golden toilet? Which leads to the next question. I've always wondered if part of the Saul that we watch is him playing up the persona, being the guy he thought would attract the type of business he was after. But then there was still a lot more of Jimmy McGill happening behind the scenes. This teaser seems to show the opposite, that he was way more Saul than we could have imagined, and it almost makes me suspicious. When asked about what we're seeing here, showrunner Peter Gould said that they were playing with the idea of whether he took the Saul Goodman mask off at the end of the day or did he leave it on. That we see that the mask has become the man, he's pretending to be Saul Goodman, and now he's living that life 24-7, or so it seems. So it's interesting because on the one hand you have that, and on the other you have Jimmy holding on to this symbol of their time together, the Sephiro Stopper, and Gould went on to say that this is a Citizen Kane tribute. He mentioned the scene in that movie where they go through his mansion, this enormous house and world that he's built for himself, and at the end you find out there's just one object that has significance, and that this Stopper is sort of their little Citizen Kane sled. It's something that tells you no matter what kind of a jerk this guy has become, what kind of heartless asshole he's made himself into, he's still holding on to some of what he had with Kim or what he has with Kim. Now this doesn't change my mind about Kim living there, but it does make me think about that phone call that he asked Francesca to take for him right before he was disappeared. Someone was going to call a predetermined payphone at a prearranged time, and Jimmy wasn't going to be able to be there to take it. It was also going to happen on his birthday, and there's never been any other great guesses on who would make it other than Kim. So it all makes for a pretty good setup, because it's really hard to see how this is all going to play out. As far as how they put it all together, there were a few things that jumped out in the Insider podcast. 
The teaser opens in black and white with a shot of ties falling onto a surface. It appears to change color to give us our first sign that we aren't heading to Omaha to see Gene. Director Michael Morris revealed that they achieved this effect by using black and white ties to start and then changing to the more colorful one Saul was known for. So they used a practical effect there, but when they did the stopper, that was actually all done in visual effects. You see it come out of the back of the truck and end up in the gutter, and there was no real stopper involved in filming that shot. They also wanted to choreograph things very deliberately, so they hired a group of dancers to play the movers. Peter Gould also brought up all the Easter eggs, and of course we noticed all these little objects and callbacks to previous seasons, but he said that there's also things, they're not quite Easter eggs, they're more like pre-Easter eggs. They're little things that will only make sense to you later in the season or when you've seen it all. We saw one example of that with the H.G. Wells Time Machine book. That was something that the camera lingered on that wasn't immediately recognizable, and then it showed up later in their bedroom on their nightstand. This adds a whole nother dimension because now you have to think about the significance of everything in that sequence rather than just the stuff you recognize. As far as the stuff we see, one of those items that might turn out to be important is this notebook that we see them put in with some of the other items. A similar looking black book showed up in one of the promo photos from a scene that hasn't appeared yet. And when he was asked about this directly, Peter Gould said that it could turn out to have a significance. You can't really make anything out looking at a screenshot, but it really stands out how she opens it and puts it in the box. So it seems likely that there's records of something that they were doing there. Maybe it's in code or something along those lines. And I'll be on the lookout for it for sure. There was one Easter egg I would have never seen on my own. This painting that they're carrying down the steps is the same one we saw in Kim's apartment. There were a couple other ones I didn't mention in my previous video. The track suits. You'll remember Jimmy wearing those in his time when he wasn't a lawyer there and he was selling the drop phones. And there were stress balls from CC Mobile. I think I mentioned the rest of them and I'll put a link to my other video if you haven't seen that yet. But I think what came to mind after this set in was that that this is all stuff from the transition. As he was giving up on the idea of being a lawyer, being accepted in that world, doing the right thing so he could impress Chuck, and they're all sort of tied to the slippery slope that he's been on. It'll be interesting to see the role that Kim plays in accelerating that, what her journey to going after Howard will turn into being, and how Jimmy becomes the kind of person that goes out and buys a golden toilet. Obviously, everything's in place for him to become Saul, but he's going to have to lose more, and he might even have to give up this idea of Kim being the most important thing in his life. We'll have to wait and see, and I think I'll leave it there. Let me know in the comments what you think. What you like the best about this teaser and what you think about it now that you've had some time to reflect on it. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.